All right, now that we've done that, we can take our grease syringe and we can put some grease on the teeth. You can also use like a Q-tip in a jar of grease, that's fine too. I'm shopping right now because I don't like, you know, because this is going in ponds and lakes and pools. This is just like a marine grease for like trailer bearings. But I'm shopping, I would like to know if anybody's got like a biodegradable grease or something. Something more environmentally friendly. I'm all ears to that because, you know, this kind of gets washed out with each run. And then obviously it goes somewhere, it goes into the water. The fish got to contend with it. So I'd like to ha have a, a better degree. So drop a comment, please, if you've got a environmentally friendly or a food based grease or something, something like that, that we could, uh, you could recommend to all of us and we could use. So, and uh, what's that saying? The bigger the gob, the better the job. I think, you know, if you put a decent amount of grease in here, I don't think it's gonna hurt you. I think it's, in the long run, it'll be better. If anything, it's just gonna get flung around inside of that gear case and keep these gears lubricated. So, you know, but don't go too much. If you pack it full, I mean, it's gonna whip it up and it'll, it'll probably blow the sides off of the case. So I don't recommend that. So that's probably, that's way too much. <laughs> but hey, at least they're not gonna run dry. All right, so I'm pretty confident in that. Now I'm gonna take my little cover, and because we put the heat inserts in, that's good. I'm gonna put that over the, the door, and then I'm gonna take my two little M2 by six millimeter screws, and I'm gonna drop those into, into place. Oops, like so. Let me grab my tiny screwdriver. All right, and let's just tighten those up. These don't need to be super tight. So they're just tiny screws. You can use Loctite on these in between runs if you like. And that is done. So make sure you check sometimes i've found that because the tolerances are so tight make sure that the door has this hatch isn't biting into the gears i can actually feel a little bit of dragging and i can feel that the door is biting into it you may need to take a dremel or something like a file to play with this little door oh look at that you can see that where the grease mark left it's got a little bit of um contact there so i might i might take a file and just take that edge off a little bit and again this is based this is all going to be based off your 3d printing tolerances and things like that so um it's just it's just something we got to go with as well, while we're making these you know just little changes here and there so let me uh i'm gonna file that off a little bit and we'll come back all right let's get to the next part of this the motor so I'm using these, these are El Cheapo, super cheap, almost disposable kind of, not, not really, but they're, um, I get them off of like AliExpress or eBay or Amazon, I'll put a link in the description, but this is a 3650 size motor, so it's 36 millimeters diameter, and then it's 50 millimeters long, and I've seen some variations on this, you know, it's got to be a 36 millimeter diameter but you know maybe like a 50 or a 40 a 52 a 48 millimeter length would work um so I, I think that's fine as long as it just it's got to fit under the cowl so you know when the wires go through the front here you, know, you have to be able to fit this all up up inside of here so i mean yeah you might be able to get maybe like a I don't, I don't even know if they make these, but like a 3656 or a 3658 maybe. But stick around to the 3650 or a, um, yeah, the 3652 size motors, and they should be smooth on the side. I don't, people ask about like the water 
cooling jackets. I mean, yeah, we could we could probably do that in the future, but honestly, I've had no issue. And, and part of that, I think, is because this thing gets wet while it's running and it's constantly hit, getting hit with water on the casing. I mean, this doesn't stay dry, which, you know, it's fine. It's a, it's a brushless motor. Brushless motors can run underwater because um, there's no moving parts to it. And honestly, all I do is it's got, these motors have these two bearings on either end and I give them a shot of some lube. You know, I've got some Teflon based lubricants, but like a WD-40 or some other lubricant kind of thing would be fine, you know, after a run. And I've had no no issue, you know, let me show you one of these. This is one of the battle torn motors I've had. I've had this motor, one of these cheap, you know, these, they can sell them under like a ton of different names. Um, obviously this one's, what is this one called? I don't even know how to read that. OCDA, OC Day. This is Ghoul RC. So this one's been through the ringer. I mean, I've had this for a long time and I, honestly, I just give this a squirt of uh some um i forget what it's called i think it's called like trilute trilube i don't know it's like a teflon based lubricant but this motor has been awesome it's I put it through so many so much crap and i put it on all these rc outboards over the years probably got at least 100 hours on this motor of running it in this and it's been fine so anyways so maybe we'll do a water cooling jacket someday but for right now you know it gets a little wet and it kind of cools itself so i'm really not super concerned all right let's go here so the next thing we need to do is we need to grab we're running out of parts here which is good we grab the uh, last three millimeter m3 nut and these last six millimeter m3 set screw we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier we're gonna push uh, push the nut in here, seat that down in there, and then we're gonna ring this out with the 30, number 32 or a three millimeter drill bit, like so. Then I'm gonna grab my tweezers, I'm just gonna align this and grab it like this and pry up a little bit. You can tell, all right, perfect, that's aligned. Take my Allen key, I'm gonna put it in here like so like i said you can use um loctite if you want on these it's fine all right so these motors come with a long shaft and they usually come with a D shaft with a flat on them and I think this one let's check roughly how long this is this one's about 14 millimeters from the end of the case and the problem is, is that we've got the shaft down here for this coupler if that shaft sticks out too much it's gonna hit that coupler in there and it's not going to seat correctly so this is where you might need either a you know a dremel or some kind of cutoff tool some kind of grinding tool to cut the shaft so you'll see what i mean here in a second so i'm going to i'm going to push the uh, coupler on to my motor just clear that out Push this on. Ouch. Jason. So these motors actually come with a 1 8 shaft. I don't know why. Everything else is metric, but they do come with a, a 1 8 shaft on them, so I need a slightly bigger drill bit. I'm going to grab a one eighth drill bit and just run it through here real fast I think for our metric friends a one eighth drill bit 0.125 inches so let's see what is that three divided by 1.125 divided by or times 25.4 so that's 3.2 ish millimeter so 
3.2-ish millimeter drill bit, run that through here. Let's see how that fits. Oh yeah, that fits way better. So I'm gonna line it up to the flat on here. And so what's gonna happen is, the way I've designed this is that when this shoulder sits against, or sorry, the, the casing of the motor sits against this shoulder, it will bottom out and then there'll be just a tiny amount of space between the two couplers. And if this motor shaft is sticking out like this, what's going to happen is um, it's going to touch down and you're not going to get full contact between the couplers. Well, you will get full contact. Mm, you won't. And then the motor won't bottom out in the shaft. So you may need to take something like a Dremel or a cutoff tool, like a Milwaukee M12 cutoff tool. And what we, we're trying to do here is we're trying to make this coupler as almost flush with the end of this motor as possible. We just want a very small gap. You know, even that's a little bit too big. I want it to be like, if I push it up against it, I don't want it to rub, but I want it to be as close as possible. You can see it's very close there. So, but, but unfortunately the end of the shaft is sticking out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to um, mark that with a, with a pen. Grab one of my pencils. And I'm gonna trim the end of the shaft just a little bit. So you can see I gotta cut it and, and really this is all un unused space. Like the only thing that we need it to bite into is the spot where the set screw is. But I don't want you to, you know, if we ever want to use this motor for something else, I don't want to ruin the motor by cutting it too short. So I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to just brush the end of that. And that's where I know I got to cut that. So let me take that off and we'll put on our safety squints and we will, um, cut that shaft down a little bit. All right, so there you go. We just cut it down a little bit. Let's put the coupler back on. Perfect. You can see it's flush with the end. So now you can put your blue Loctite on this. Make sure it's aligned with the flat of the shaft and you can tighten that up. Nice. It's on there nice and tight. Now, what we're gonna do is we have to get this to fit correctly. We have to like index the um, the couplers together. So I've got one tooth pointing straight ahead and I've got uh, a gap right there, so a matching gap. So I'm gonna tip these into each other and then they should seat all the way. So you'll know, you know, quick trick, right? So if you take your Allen key, and you know that the shoulder is this deep, right? So if I put the same marker onto here, I know that I have to basically, I'm using my Allen key to scratch the surface. See how I put a line in, the, in that O? I know that that has to be even with the top surface of the outboard for me to know that it, it went all the way down, so and that it's seated all the way. So I'm gonna push that. And this is tricky. Just kind of rotate it back and forth, picking it up, putting it down until you feel it click into place. Perfect. And 
right at where that O is. It's right where I want it to be. So I'm gonna rotate it to the front. So I want my wire sticking out. Like so. I'm gonna come back with my two millimeter Allen key. I'm gonna tighten the motor up. I got blood. I'm bleeding because I just cut my finger earlier. Hopefully you don't get blood on your motor. Anyways, tighten this up. Like I said, I, this is an older motor where I had the, it used to be where I, when I first made this, I had a, had it sized for an M4 screw. But now I've got it for a much smaller M3 screw. So the design has been updated, so don't worry about that. And then you want to snug this up so it's gripping the motor, not too much. There we go. All right, and that's nice and snug now. And now, so give this a rotation real quick. It shouldn't bind. It should. There should be no binding or anything. This is as smooth as it was when we didn't have the motor in. If you feel binding, that means you did something wrong. Either this is not is engaged too far or it's something's bottoming out so go back and start from the beginning and make sure everything's going together smoothly but that's that's perfect so last step here you know you got your extra couple extra shim, shims keep those to the side you might need those as this wears in you might need to take it apart and re-shim the motor or the gears so anyways i'm going to take my wires guide them through the cowling here and the motors the wires come out like so you can see this motor it was lifting off the print bed so there's a little gap so this is its good side and that is complete you're now done you can uh you can now put this on the um the thrust stand Put it on the thrust stand that you uh, that I have up. It's just a nice little stand. I don't know. Maybe somebody can make something a little nicer. But it's good for running it. You can put this into like a fish tank. So then you line up. Put it uh, into this little notchy part. Drop your three millimeter clevis pin into place. Put your R pin back in. So you don't lose it. Come on. Well, you know what? Goodness gracious. Oh, now you're just playing with me. That took too long. These um, 3900 kV, 3650 motors, they come usually come with like a 60 amp ESC air cooled. You'll probably want some kind of a water cooled ESC because this is going to be mounted inside of your boat. It's probably going to get hot. So I've, I've had these, these work okay for like five minutes, but then they overheat because they're trapped inside the RC boats. Um, but anyway, so just for demonstration purposes, right? So. I'm gonna just hook these up, these barrel connectors up. Now, if you're not familiar with brushless motors, they're actually three-phase motors. And 
um, the direction can be changed by you switch two of these leads. So get everything out of the way. So you got a nice clean photo. I'm gonna bring my controller in here. Just gonna leave that on its side. Um, you can run this motor depending on what motor you get. Generally, because it's 3900 kV, it's a really high speed motor, and we have a small prop, we don't really need a ton of torque. Um, you know, either a 2S or a 3S LiPo is fine for this, right? Depending on now, make sure it's compatible with your motor specifically. But these are 2S, 3S motors and um, ESCs, so that's what I'm running here. And so, as far as controllers go, I mean, anything will work. I, I, this is like my all around RC airplane controller, and it's a little bit harder to drive than like the pistol grip ones where you have like the wheel, but I find this is nice because. I've got a lot of different like things like my RC submarine or all these RC boats that I have. This this controller is nice because I can do anything with it. But uh, so anyways, when, when you got this thing full fully assembled and everything put together, um, you want to do like kind of like a break in where you um, you're gonna run it in at slow speed, try to check basically to check out um, you know how it's operating. So um, I got this thing hooked up. I got my 3S LiPo on. You could use a 2S for this. I'm just gonna run it at slow speed. I'm just gonna listen to the sound. Right? We wanna make sure that we did all the, the static testing of and setting of our gears, right? We made sure that there wasn't any slop or nothing and that it was, um, you know, that wasn't binding. But now we wanna just run it in and do some dynamic testing and listen to it. So I'm gonna turn it on here. You can hear how it's hunting a little bit. I would expect that from one of these motors. They're not really great at low speed. But that that tone is easier if I turn it off. That that tone, it's actually is um that's that sounds about what I would expect. It's kind of like a a little bit of a growl. Not really a growl, it's somewhere between a growl and like a squeak, I guess. Uh, but that's the sound of those that those bearing, the gears should be making. If you hear something like a grinding or a, I don't know something more aggressive, um, I would definitely be concerned, right? Like if you hear something you're like holy crap, that doesn't sound good at all, I would take it apart and you know, go back and watch this video again and check, you know, make sure that you're doing everything um, that you did all the right steps, right? You got the right amount of shims. You know, the worst thing you're gonna hear, you could hear, is like gnashing of teeth. Like <laughs> that would mean that either you set the, the teeth are too far together, or they're they're like barely touching and they're starting to grind each other off. So just be careful with it. You know, use your common sense, mechanical best judgment. But let's run it a little faster and hear how it sounds. You probably want to do some low speed sweeps, you know, just maybe like 10% of throttle, zero to 10% of throttle, you know, up and down, check it out, make sure it's running in. And I can already, I can already tell this is getting smoother, um, just from the, from listening to the, the frequency that it's making. And look at the, the low speed RPM stability is getting better. You can hear it's not hunting as much. You know, it's starting to settle in, which is nice. All right, so I'm gonna rev it up a little bit more and let it hang out.
mess on my table. I mean, and right now you can you can already hear how much better it's running. So it's it's a lot smoother. It's um, it's staying at the right the same RPM. And that's just gonna get better as we run. So now is the, the perfect time. So you know, after you've done that a couple of times, take the cover off. You know, as long as you're hearing decent sounds, right? You're not hearing anything that sounds like the motor is super struggling, or you know, it's it's hitting things, or like the teeth are shearing off. Just throwing some of the some of the grease is getting thrown around. If you can see it. Another reason to use maybe a colored outboard or something. Oops. Greasy. So I went back off camera and I had some more grease into this thing. But I just want we just want to check out the gear teeth. Everything looks perfect. I mean, this is, you know, it's it's just kind of very similar to a real outboard, right? So if you see metal sha shavings or flakes inside of this area, okay, that's that's a big indicator that we got a problem. Another thing is that um, if we see any like weird wearing on the teeth, and the, it's kind of hard to describe, but the teeth shouldn't look like they've got like an impression on them in any on any particular tooth right like they should all look very uniform colored and they shouldn't have like burrs to them or look like they've been stretched or pushed on and what i mean by that is you'll, you'll see a tooth doesn't quite look like a tooth it looks like it's somebody hit it with like a, a punch or something it'll, it'll be deformed and i don't see any of that here and that's going to be an indication that you're getting good um, meshing between your gears as if they're all the teeth are are wearing nicely as they are here um that's an indication that you got the gear mesh set correctly so more power to you um now i would recommend you you know after you've done some of these bench top tests i would say if you've got an old fish tank or a bucket of water definitely set the outboard up in that and then start doing some testing on your own Make sure that yours is, is performing at the level you want it to be. And now we should be able to go put this on some of our boats.